Hello everyone, my name is Ala Ataha. I'm a PGY2 internal medicine resident at the Ascension Providence Rochester Wayne State Internal Medicine Residency Program. Today I'm going to be presenting our QI project, Improving Sepsis Care in a Community Hospital, a QI initiative. I'm going to start by talking a little bit about sepsis, which is one of the leading causes of hospitalizations and death worldwide. There are sepsis treatment protocols that have been developed to standardize care. These are time-specific bundles that call for providers to complete different tasks based on lapse time since recognition of sepsis. There's a three-hour sepsis bundle, which includes measuring lactate level, obtaining blood cultures, administering antibiotics, and IV fluids, ideally 30 cc per kilograms if the patient is hypotensive or has an elevated lactate of more than four. Our hospital developed a sepsis bundle order set that includes the needed order to help improve adherence to sepsis bundle. However, the hospital data still showed lack of adherence to standardized care. The provider utilized the sepsis bundle order set only in 3% of sepsis patients. Our aim for the third PDSA cycle is to improve adherence to the sepsis bundle ordering by 20% in the next six months. Using the IHI model, a quality improvement project was initiated. A multidisciplinary sepsis team was created, including the ER physician, internal medicine residents, nurses, pharmacists, and EMR representatives. The team had monthly sepsis meetings, which focused on performing a root cause analysis and developing improvements in the system. PDSA cycles were used to test change. Root cause analysis was done using a fishbone diagram. In the first cycle, education about guidelines was provided. In the second cycle, education along with a workshop was created to provide case scenarios and a Q&A session. For the third PDSA cycle, the team provided an educational session about sepsis bundle and the outcome benefits of standardized sepsis orders. Education about sepsis outcomes, gaps, and protocols were provided to residents via multiple conferences. Residents were educated about documenting adherence in the EMR. We are currently collecting post-implementation data to, to measure sepsis bundle compliance in the next six months. We were also able to fix a glitch in the EMR system that led to lactate orders not showing up when patients are moved out of the ED. Here we can see the fishbone diagram. On the right, the problem is lack of adherence to the sepsis protocol. The suspected problems in the EMR is lactate orders not showing up when patients get moved out of the ED. The people lack of education about most recent recommendations, and lack of awareness of the sepsis bundle, which includes all the needed orders. System-wise, the busy hospital setting makes it possible to miss certain orders and follow-ups, and there is no designated person to follow up on bundle orders being ordered in the ED. And now to the conclusion and next steps. So improving sepsis outcomes by utilizing surviving sepsis campaign guidelines provides us with the tools necessary to reduce overall mortality from this condition. The most effective and sustainable results are usually created using a system-based approach and a multidisciplinary team. Our hospital sepsis committee is a great example of a multidisciplinary team approach to managing sepsis. However, we faced some challenges in the last year as the emergency department went through a transition and we uncovered a lack of sustainability from previously implemented measures. We plan to meet monthly, reevaluate the root cause analysis, and incorporate education that may lead to improvement in sepsis care. We will be collecting and studying the data following each intervention and monitor how improving adherence using the sepsis bundle order set will affect the adherence to sepsis protocol. Thank you for listening.